Greg, why don't you tell us about the specific Intel content that's inside the VMAX, for example? Sure. Um, each one of these boxes represents a dual-core Xeon server. So uh, uh, the minimum configuration for a VMAX is actually uh, two servers. Uh, um, the maximum configuration today is 16 servers. So that's 32 sockets of Xeon, high-end Xeon per VMAX. So we really like it when you sell VMAX products. We like selling <coughs> VMAX products also, Greg. And, uh, and it speaks to where these products fit in the marketplace. Um, there's a reason why VMAX represents something like 85 to 90 percent market share in high-end financial applications. Um, this is a high-performance, highly redundant, highly scalable product. Intel's manufacturing runs on VMAX, for example. Not only are you running local copies of data for production, but you do a short hop to an off-site location that is relatively close within synchronous distances, followed by a second hop further away so that you're protected against local disasters and regional disasters your production can maintain throughout those kind of scenarios. That's something that you can do with a platform like VMAX. It's a lot harder to do with a VNX. VNX is more suited for things like email, messaging, relatively simple high-performance applications. If you look at the additional levels of redundancy that VMAX brings to bear, you can see that the system can sustain all sorts of faults while maintaining performance.